Buenos días y uh, buenas tardes a todos y todas. Uh, bienvenidos al lanzamiento. Good morning or afternoon to everyone. Welcome to the launching of the Lancet Commission Americ from the World Bank and Bajo on primary health services and resilience in Latin America and the Caribbean. My name is Tania Dimitrichenko. I'm manager of health practices in the region of the Americas in the World Bank, and it is an honor for me to moderate this important encounter. I'd like to say hello to everyone who is following us through digital platforms, and I'd like to say hello to the participants in this very important launch. We have more than 1,400 people in this event. To begin, Sorry, sorry, I think I had a small problem with my audio. So to begin, I would like to go with the welcoming panel. We will start with Dr. Juan Pablo Uribe, Global Director of Health Practices, Nutrition and Population in the World Bank. Juan Pablo, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Tania, and good morning or afternoon to everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to express my great gratitude to Dr. Jarpas Barbosa, James, you as well, and all the colleagues from PAHO for this initiative. So I'd also like to thank Elisa Puku, uh, editor of The Lancet in Latin America. I'd like to thank her for joining us and leading us through this initiative. And of course, I'd like to uh, salute the former President Bachelet. It's a great pleasure to see you and to be able to hear from you in this effort towards primary care in our continent. I'd also like to thank all of the academic institutions that participate in this initiative, bringing you their knowledge and effort. And of course, the 18 commissioners that have accepted providing us some of their time in these coming months and especially their knowledge, experience, and recommendations. This is an initiative that is really worth it. We really should provide support to it. And I'd like to go to that, the value of this initiative in these initial words, something that we all know, but sometimes forget in our daily work in our institutions is that the problems that we are facing in our countries and in the region in Latin America and the world in general, those problems, those challenges that we have are much greater many times than any one of our single institutions and the resources and capabilities of our institutions have to, to face them. So if we consider that, we have to understand that to face inequality, uh, climate change, violence, poverty, migration, and chronic diseases and mental health problems and the risks of a future pandemic, whatever we look at, what we have to do is collaborate and work together with partnerships. That's the only way to do it. So that is my conclusion. And that is why this initiative is precisely that. It is a recognition that we all have to work together in Latin America in a dimension that is as important as primary health care services. And I'd like to just stop for a minute or two on the importance of primary health care services and the work that the World Bank is leading with PAHO and other many institutions in the region and around the world. We understand primary health care services as the main axis to build health systems it's not, we always see the need for a resilience, balanced, sustainable health system that responds to the expectations of the citizens. And this is the point where we start building that resilient and balanced system. So in primary health healthcare, we know this, it is reflected in the community and this is where the public health functions are focused, in essence, and we have our main mechanisms to detect and contain future outbreaks or pandemics. We also see a big part of real 
access that we hope are with quality and respect that people receive throughout their lives from birth to the end of life. So primary health care is that access that should look for balance. And again, in not in an isolated way, not replacing other aspects in a healthcare system, but bringing connection and of course, a good performance. I'd like to finish Tanya with an expression about the importance of the Lancet Commission in Latin America. Dr. Barbosa, again, I'd like to thank Pajo. Great part of the work that the bank does, not just in Latin America, but in all the regions, a big part of its portfolio is reflected in primary health care and the needs that the countries have to strengthen it and build upon it and that need that we all have to bring renewed knowledge, more ideas, more recommendations that we hope are always practical about how to strengthen it and strengthen, therefore, healthcare systems in our countries. So I would like to finish by telling the commissioners that we have great expectations and we will be looking at the work that El this Lancet Commission does, ELISA, and we hope that from this we get very good recommendations and recommendations that are basically practical, useful for our healthcare systems, for their leaders to transform the realities that are sometimes very hard to overcome in healthcare services in Latin America. So with these expectations, Tania, we would like to go back to you. And of course, in the name of the World Bank, we'd like to thank everyone. Thank you, Juan Pablo, for kicking off this important event with words that inspire, inspire all of us, I hope, to begin this very important work very well. Now I'd like to go with Dr. Harpas Barbosa, director of the Pan American Health Organization. We'd like to hear his welcoming words. Thank you very much, Tanya. Dear colleagues from PAHO and the World Bank, in the name of Tanya and James, I'd like to congratulate everyone who's working so significantly significantly in our institutions. Distinguished Dr. Michelle Bacelet, former president of Chile and High Commissioner of Human Rights of the UN. It's an honor to have you participating again in such an important initiative from the Pan American Health Organization, the World Bank. Dr. Juan Pablo Uribe, Global Director of Health, Nutrition and Population in the World Bank and other members of the Lancet Commission from the World Bank and Japajo, health authorities and experts in the fields and all participants. It is an honor to address you in this critical moment for public health in our region. In the Americas, we face a series of complicated and urgent challenges related to primary health services and resilience of the health systems in front of health emergencies. The need to understand and transform the, to address the risks of epidemics that cause COVID-19, demographic changes, conflicts, and many others is more evident than ever. The new Lancet Commission of the Americas from the World Bank and PAHO about primary health services and resilience in Latin America and the Caribbean is an initiative that is transcendental, that is trying to advance in critical knowledge that is necessary to inform fundamental decision-making in the future development of APS resilience of health systems in a region. This commission sets a significant landmark, being the first one of the uh, Lancet Division of Health in the Americas, becoming a joint effort to provide relevant knowledge to contribute not just to the Americas, but global efforts in this very important topic. It also aligns with the regional moment that we are pushing through the Alliance for Primary Health Services through PAHO, the World Bank, and the Inter-American Development Bank that they launched in Uruguay in December of 2023 to support the countries in the region in developing health systems that are more resilient, more equal, and more inclusive. 
The objective is outlined by the commission are ambitious and essential. Developing a comprehensive policy framework, identifying the fundamental strategies and policies, and conducting an in-depth assessment of the consequences of failing to construct the resilient health systems based on a primary healthcare approach are crucial steps to guide our future actions. These efforts are critical to addressing pre-existing structural and operational weakness in our health systems, optimizing the use of limited public resources for health, building trust in institutions, and reversing deep-rooted inequalities in our society. Primary health care is the strategic cornerstone for recovering the public health gains that were lost during the COVID-19 pandemic and reducing health inequities. For PAHO, Having a formal initiative that examines the critical tenets of health system resilience, linked with the strategic priority of primary health care, will support us in providing guidance to our member states. As the work of this commission proceeds, it will be vital that we continue to invest and implement, leveraging the lessons learned from the pandemic and transforming our health systems based on primary health care. I urge each of you to actively collaborate, to share knowledge, and to work together to face the challenges at hand. I appreciate the participation of each one of you in this commission, and I am confident that by working together, we will achieve significant progress in transforming primary health care and building resilience in Latin America and the Caribbean. Thank you for your commitment and invaluable contribution. Thank you. Tanya, back to you. Muito obrigada, Dr. Barbosa, por suas palavras inspiradoras. Thanks so much for your words. Now, I, Dr. Elisa Bokup, editor, senior editor of Lancet Regional Health Americas. Hello, good morning. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Elisa Bokup, and I'm senior editor for the Lancet Regional Health Americas. Thank you so much for having me, and... I'm very happy to be introducing the World pa uh, Bank and PAHO Commission on Primary Health Care and Resilience in Latin America and the Caribbean. Um, we believe that this commission has been organized in a critical moment after COVID-19's impact on health systems that affected all countries in the region, taking a toll on healthcare. And now with the climate emergency impact that is already affecting people's health. Though a challenge to be faced with, we believe that tackling primary health through universal healthcare is an urgency that sets up a foundation of resilient health systems in our society. The Latin America and the Caribbean has a great legacy of healthcare, healthcare coverage with many important successful outcomes. However, we are now facing many new challenges and it is very important to be committed to recover and to invest in future public health emergencies preparedness. Ever since it was founded in 1823, one of the main goals of the Lancet as a medical journal was to make science widely available so medicine could serve and transform society, positively impacting lives. And now, 201 years later in 2024, we are comprised of 24 journals and committed to the same goal of being more than a medical journal. The Lancet Regional Health Global Initiative advocates for equal access to quality healthcare for all and foster advancement of clinical practice and health policy. The Lancet, the Lancet Regional Health Americas is part of this initiative promoting the advancement and improvement of health outcomes for all people in the Americas. This commission is aligned with our journal's mission to advocate for change in clinical practice and health policy in the Americas. And we truly hope that this commission will result in a reference report to guide primary health care and resilience in Latin America and the Caribbean. So thank you again for trusting our journal to make this project happen. Back to you, Tanya. Thank you. 
Gracias, Elisa. Um, uh, ahora para conocer Thank más. You, Elisa. Now to get to know about the commission and who is going to be part of the, or who's going to be a commissioner, we will go with Dr. Christian Herrera, Senior Specialist in Health in the World Bank, and Ernesto Basculo, Head of the Primary Health Care Unit and Integrated Service Health Services in the Pan American Health Organization. Christian and Ernesto. Thank you very much, Tanya. I am now sharing my screen. I hope everyone can see it. Well, before I start, it is an honor and pleasure to launch, after months of work and preparation, this commission. The Lancet Americas, this association between the World Bank and PAHO and the Re Lancet Regional Health Americas. And well, addressing a topic that is as important as this, we thank everyone for the their work to make this possible. So to continue, I'd like to go with my colleague, Dr. Basculo, so that he can continue with the presentation. Thank you, Christian. And I'd also like to thank you everyone for this opportunity. I have two fundamental messages. One is going to be connected to the goals, and the other one is going to be the main products that we have in the commission. So regarding the goals, I am going to highlight three fundamental elements. One is related to conceptual framework, uh, analytical and practical. Regarding the first one, we are going to produce a theoretical framework for policies and for primary health care and resilience in health systems that can structure the critical areas of public policies in health, defining roles and functions that should be assumed under primary health care to develop and prevent, prepare and respond to public health emergencies. Now regarding the practical and policy component, the commission is going to identify strategies, policies, and investments that the countries in the region of Latin America and the Caribbean can make. And the last one is we need to study the possible consequences of not building said resilience into primary healthcare systems in Latin America and the Caribbean, considering the nature and the specificities of the context, including, of course, people's health, but of course, also social and economic results or outcomes. Regarding the products, I would like to first mention the need to connect three fundamental dimensions high quality work and the involvement of relevant stakeholders in the region for this production process and for this to make sense so that it can influence decision making. Regarding the details of the products, first of all, I have to highlight the publication of the main report of the Lancet Regional Health Americas revision this is one of the concrete products. The second one, we have other related publications. We are thinking about the inclusion of subject matter articles, maybe more connected, for example, to climate change, digital health, essential services, gender, etc. And on the other hand, carrying out country case studies where we will be defining in the different sub-regions of the continent, the best experiences. Also, as part of the activities of dissemination, we are going to be holding online or virtual and also in-person events for dialogue and involvement of the stakeholders that will be involved in this process. We are also developing a web page where we will be depositing all of the production of the project. And lastly, we will also be participating in scientific, international scientific conferences 
to disseminate the production that is associated to this project. And lastly, sorry, a final event ending the high level project to launch and promote dialogue about the content in the final report of this project. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ernesto. And now we will be talking about the people that will be forming this commission. Well, first we have this team, we call this the coordination team. We have representatives from three groups, the World Bank, where I have my colleague Manuela Villarrubi, she's a senior health specialist in the World Bank, and myself, I work more specifically in the Latin American and Caribbean region. Then from the Pan American Health Organization, we will have Ernesto. You just heard him. He is head of the primary uh, healthcare services unit and also integrated services provision unit. And also Natila Hutton. She is a specialist in assessment and health system policies. They both represent PAHO. And then we wanted to bring to this coordination team with the spirit of having the highest technical quality for our work, we integrated two co-chairs from the academic environment, Sarah Bennett. She is professor in John Hopkins University in the United States and Adriana Masuda, professor from the Getulio Vargas Foundation in Brazil. With them, we will strengthen the analytical technical area. Then we have the 18 commissioners that will that I will show you. And we thank you, of course, for your generous availability to join this ambitious project. First, we have Marcia Castro. She is professor specialist in demographics and health in the School for Public Health from Harvard. She is from Brazil. Then we have Myrna Cunningham. She is doctor and surgeon, specialist in public health and specifically human rights for indigenous peoples. She is from Nicaragua. We have also Walter Flores. He is from Guatemala. He is currently professor in the American University in Washington, DC, where he works on equality, participation, uh, governance, and civil society. It's relevant to have that outlook in the work that the commission does. Then we have Peter Figueroa. He is a specialist in professor in public health epidemiology in the West Indies University in Jamaica. He is representing the Caribbean and he also has experience in a previous Lancet Commission related to COVID-19. Now we have Dr. Ezequiel Garcia Elorio. He is the director of the Department of Quality and Security and Health Services in EX in Argentina, specialist in health equality in health systems, and also has experience in a previous Lancet Commission. We also have Dr. Paolo Gaetan Rossi, from Mexico, he joins us. He's director of ECIDI, which is an Institute for Investigation for Development with Equality from the Ibero-American University. He's also head of the International Equity and in Health Bulletin or magazine. We have Jenny Haggerty, titular professor or full professor from the Department of Family Medicine in the University of McGill in Canada. She is Bolivian Canadian, and she brings the family medicine perspective to the commission. Then we have Lydia Giovanella, investigator, researcher from Pio Cruz, the strategic uh, uh, study center in the school. She comes from Brazil. Then we have Frederico Guanais, he is assistant head of the Division of Health from the Organization for Cooperation uh, Development, Economic Development Cooperation. He is in France, but he is Brazilian. And he also has vast experience and knowledge in the region and in primary healthcare, primarily. Then we have Stella Hartinger. She is Associate Professor and Environmental Epidemiologist from the 
School of Public Health from the Peruvian University of Cayetano Heredia from Peru, bringing knowledge in a great global challenge that is climate change. Then we have Daniel Luna. He is head of the IT department of the Italian Hospital of Buenos Aires. And in this hospital, well, this is a university hospital. He is bringing us the perspective of digital health tools that are very important now for resilience. James Machinko, the professor of policy in management and community health in the University of California, UCLA, in the United States. He's been studying health systems in Latin America and the Caribbean for a long time. Then we have Dr. Helia Molina. She is from Chile. She is a dep member of the lower chamber of Congress in Chile. She is former dean of the School of Sciences of the University of Santiago and former Minister of Health. So she brings both the technical outlook, but also the political outlook to the uh, commission that we do. Diana Pinto, she is a specialist in policy and economy in international health and vast experience in the region. And she brings her knowledge of Latin America and the Caribbean. We have Magdalena Rate. She is founder of Plenitude, an economist in health, a specialist in financing health systems. She comes from the Dominican Republic. We have Rocio Science. She is executive director of the Network of the Americas for Equity in Health. She is also former president of the Costa Rican Caja for Social Security and former minister of health. So again, she comes from both the political context and practice. And finally, we have Renato Tasca, currently consultant for the Institute of uh, Study for Public Policies in Brazil. He is originally Italian, but ha he has adopted the region of the Americas and he joins us work. And Karina Vance Mafia, General Secretary of Territorial Coordination, Governance and Social Participation from the municipality of Quito in Ecuador, and she is also former Minister of Health. So she again has this outlook of public policy for the commission. And this last slide is just to tell you that we are at your disposal and we hope to continue staying in touch so that we can make this commission as participative as possible. And I'd like to close by thanking everyone for their support in the different organization, World Bank, uh, PAHO and The Lancet. So we hope we can stay in touch and meet soon so that we can we uh, we can move forward with this task. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ernesto, for defining the objectives of the or the goals of the commission. And thank you, Christian, for introducing all the commissioners. The work that we have ahead of us is challenging, but as Ernesto was saying, the consequences of not doing this would be disastrous. Now, I have the honor of introducing Dr. Michelle Bachelet, former president of Chile and High Commissioner of Human Rights of the United Nations. She will be providing us her comments regarding this initiative. Thank you very much, Taina, and dear Juan Pablo Uribe, Global Director of the World Bank, and Carlos Barab, the Director of PAHO, Dr. Elisa Puco, Senior Director of Lancet Americas. And I'd also like to say, Jim Gerald, where we were working in a similar commission recently in PAHO in the context of the encounter of Amatas. So I'd also like to say hello to all the commissioners reading the Commission for Primary Healthcare Services and Resilience in Latin America and the Caribbean, and everyone present. Friends, thank you very much for inviting me to give comments on this great initiative that is arriving in a key moment where we're trying to go back to what we call normality. But frankly, I would like to say that that normality that we had before we had COVID is what led us to the situation. So I wouldn't like to go back to that normality. On the contrary, I would like to have changes 
to be prepared, but also to assume that the inequalities in our countries do affect people very differently. So I would say, I would say instead of building back better, building forward better. So as we all know, COVID-19 had huge impact in health, but also in the economy and social development, showing us the in the hardest way that we had to have structural and deep changes in our societies. COVID led to those, COVID did not uh, create those inequalities. It just made them evident. It made the differences in the world and in a region evident. And one of the changes is what we have to have in our health systems in Latin America. These systems are fragmented, uh, needing more resources, leading to unfair discrimination, Obviously, we are talking about a problem of underfinancing, uh, especially low public investment. It does mean that, that families have to pay out from their pockets to be able to pay for health services. This affects those who are most vulnerable, mostly. The systems that are provided are usually low quality, and this creates risks for the benefits, or at least it doesn't bring the benefits that they should and the efforts that have been made. And I would like to say that there have been a lot of efforts, and I think this is one of the tasks that the commissions will have to assess. Uh, they will have to see why what has happened happened and why after so many models este no haya tenido lo, digamos, that we said were adequate for primary and healthcare services did not bring the results. And there's many reasons for this. But to not repeat on this, we have to look at new and different. I'm going to refer to something in the future. So the efforts that have been made to address social determinants in health and reach health in public policies has been representing a challenge for the sector. And as said, the pandemic and COVID showed that health systems were not prepared to face these emergencies. And we know that this won't be the last pandemic pandemias que sin duda merecen una atención muy central. I think of pandemics and outbreaks that require a close look, but we have to look at a climate crisis. I don't want to mention climate change because I think there's more than that. It's a tripod crisis where climate change is one element, contamination or pollution is another one, and loss of biodiversity is another, and this leads us to face new and multiple threats and all the interactions and everything that is related to migrations, hunger, health problems, and or conflicts because of territory or water, these all impact health. And for example, we have seen in the region the intense and recurrent heat waves in Brazil. In fact, we in Chile, we say that we're frying eggs because it's 38 degrees today, which is not a picture for a country. We have had hurricanes in the Caribbean, torrential rains and flooding in Colombia, but we also have forest fires in California and in Chile and other countries in the region. And this is just to mention a few events. There's also demographic shocks caused by internal conflicts in the countries that have led to migration waves that we have seen in the last few years. Uh, you see that's now from Venezuela. And it has become worse because this is the region in the world that has the highest social inequalities. We have to remember the COVID-19 crisis and the climate change and other emergencies have affected those who are forced, the women and girls and ethnic minorities. COVID-19 make it made the intersectoral concept very clear. We can't have neutral policies because not all are affected in the same way. It is true that women and girls are more affected, but it's not the same to be a professional woman with resources than an older woman or one that has a disability or one that is indigenous or lives in a rural environment. In most countries, we do not have the data to allow us to identify exactly what we're talking about. We know there's disabled women, we know that there's uh, elderly populations, we know there's girls, but we do not how many have all these characteristics. So if we can create neutral policies as if everyone was equal, we will be leaving behind them behind because they are already behind. So I think this is a huge challenge for health and statistical systems to obtain the data to allow us to have 
sufficiently effective policies. And because of all of this, I think we have to consider discussions of the future and any transformation in health. There are leaders that do not consider this a priority, leading to an increase in inequalities in our societies and affecting those who are most vulnerable. Uh, the director of ONU Women and as former High Commissioner of Human Rights that I would like to highlight something that we all know. Sometimes in the world of health, we don't talk about this, but health is a fundamental right and it allows you, it is, it allows us to carry out our capabilities so that we can live with dignity. So I think this is the essential justification to make the necessary changes to the health systems. And if we had to pick something to prioritize, I would undoubtedly say it's primary health services because universal care based on primary health care services make the right to health effective or real so that all people can have equal and effective access to health services. Now, the primary health service attention is one of the most effective public investments. It's efficient, and it's something that we can carry forth, being key to reach this goal of universal health. We have to talk about care before treatment. Of course, we have to treat it, but before we have to prevent it, and we have to have all provisional and preventive measures, such as vaccination, periodic uh, checkups, and others, primary health reduces the burden of disease and improves the quality of life of people. So we all know this, and I am sure that everyone who's here shares this vision. But I would like to highlight also what I think is more innovative in this initiative from PAHO and the World Bank and this direct connection with resilience. Primary health care does favor resilience, contributing to build strong and healthy communities, and we hope with solidarity. When people have access to quality health services, they have a greater possibility of having a productive life, contributing to the economy and participating actively in society. And it also reinforces social cohesion and fosters a sense of community. And this is relevant when mistrust in institutions is at peak levels in the region, being a very important thing to achieve. So resilience is not just response to emergencies, but also preparing for them. And primary health care services can have a vital role in the response to a catastrophe in establishing solid health services. Societies can efficiently respond, mitigating the impacts of disasters and guaranteeing the well-being of their citizens. For example, primary health care services could be emergency response centers during natural catastrophes. Chile has a doctorate in natural catastrophes or disasters, so we know that this is an important contribution, providing immediate medical attention to, to whoever needs it, but also providing information, reaching those who are affected. Primary health can also contribute to better epidemiological surveillance and other emerging risks, preventing even the outbreak or an outbreak or an emergency. But in Latin America and the Caribbean, in Latin America and the Caribbean, we don't have systems that are prepared for the COVID-19. And it well, there were many lives that were safe, but there were strategies that were not followed, like testing and tracing of cases that is key to contain the pandemic at a local level. So there's still a great need to see which are the new functions and actions that the governments and the society in general have to move, push forward to strengthen primary health care services in today's future emergencies and crises that will come, given the context that we have to contribute to resilience in all health systems and society in general. In calm times, meaning when we don't have an emergency or a crisis, this is when we need to be most concerned so that we can prevent, prepare, so that we are ready when we when this happens. This is the initiative of this commission that has economic, social, and political relevance, bringing big experts. And I think there is a lot of equality in the commission with different experiences and different knowledge. PAHO is the health authority and a World Bank, a great financer for 
development of Latin America and the Caribbean, they have a lot of knowledge and they have ingredients that can bring good product and good impact. And as Juan Pablo Uribe is saying, we can face these, we can work together and cooperate to face these, and it is essential. And I'd like to finish by inviting you to make this not just an, a high quality academic exercise, but to have a equal magnitude in reaching governments or decision makers or those who are in positions of power and also having participation involving civil society so that that transformation can occur because this is something that cannot take friends the understanding of health as a fundamental right and the building of resilience are necessary to develop societies towards a future where emergencies will be more frequent so i wish you have the best success for so that the region of Latin America and the Caribbean ha becomes a guide in transformation in health systems and so that we have more human and resilient societies with better quality of health for people that is closer and more efficient. And this will mean a better quality of life for everyone. And you can count on me for that. Thank you. Bachelet, uh, por sus Thank uh, you very much, President Bachelet, for your message, for your inspiring message. And I'd like to thank you for your analysis of the situation. We hope that we can accept you, uh, adapt your recommendations, bring them to practice, and as you said, to decision makers and civil society. To finish with the event, I would like to go with our partner and friend, Dr. James Fitzgerald, Director of Healthcare Services Systems of the Pan American Health Organizations. James. Colleagues, really after the profound uh, reflections that we've heard from President Bachelet this morning, uh, as the director of the Department of Health System Services, my role is very simple um, at this point, is really to allow us the time to digest um, the profound considerations that we've heard um, from President Bachelet, um, from Juan Pablo, from Dr. Barbosa, um, supporting the incorporation of these uh, considerations in future deliber deliberations of the work of uh, this commission. And so we've arrived really at the close of this event, um, this Lance Lancet World Bank uh, PAHO Commission on Primary Healthcare and the Resilience in LAC. I really want to extend on behalf of everyone our thanks to Juan Pablo, to you, Tanya, um, to Christian from the World Bank for your engagement and commitment for moving this forward. Uh, to my director, Jarvis Barbosa, and all the team at PAHO, to Ernesto and Natalia, uh, ensuring um, that we have a strong presence and ensuring alignment of the work of the Commission with the mandates of the organization. To Elisa, to the Lancet Regional Health Americas for hosting us, for, for, for supporting this work. And of course, to the chairs of the Commission, Christian and Ernesto, we have our work cut out. So we, we really look forward to your leadership and coordinating all of this. To the 18 commissioners, um, many thanks for your support, for your time, for your dedication to this process and to more than the 600 participants in this event uh, for your country, for your your contribution and participation as we move forward into this uh, process. And a special note of thanks to President Bachelet for her continued commitment and support to the agenda of primary health care, noting, as President Bachelet mentioned, that she was actually the head of the Commission on Universal Health in 21st century, 40 years of Alma Ata, which concluded its work in 2019, just before the COVID-19 pandemic. And I'm sure many of those considerations and reflections of that commission will be will be taken forward, adapted within the context uh, of the work, uh, looking forward to really strengthening health systems based on primary health care. So thank you very much for your for your commitment. We'll really look forward to the discussions and debate within the com uh, within the commission uh, around such key issues. And we really just urge you all to remain dedicated to the task in hand, uh, which is really building resilient health systems um, based on primary health care that have the capacity to be inclusive, expansive, um, and have the necessary search capacity um, ensuring excuse me, ensuring the delivery of health services that are required uh, by all in this region. Thanks again uh, to you all for your participation, and we really look forward to sharing with you the outcomes of this important process. Uh, thank you very much, Tanya. 
Um, muchas gracias, uh, James, y gracias a todos. Thank que you sean. very much, James, and I'd like to thank everyone who participated. I'd like to thank everyone who connected to this important launch. We hope that we can stay in touch, and, well, we hope to see you soon. Thank you very much.